Hello everybody, I'm Dan Herring and welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365 and welcome to Top Water Tuesday. So this is the first of our series for Top Water Tuesdays. You know, this is the time of the year now where I begin having dreams at night and usually it starts in late January and February and increases in frequency and intensity in March and, and April. And usually those dreams have to do with me catching smallmouth bass. And a lot of times it's with topwater lures because topwater is my favorite way to fish. <clears throat> and this is the time of year where I always begin to think about uh, the, the, the new year and what opportunities will present themselves for fishing topwaters. So today we're going to take a topwater bait. It's our first Topwater Tuesday. Each Tuesday we're going to take a topwater bait and give you a little bit of a basic review on it. And today that review will be on the Lucky Craft Sammy. So the, the Sammy has been around for quite a number of years already. So it's, it's amazing. I remember when this bait first came on the scene. And uh, at that time, <clears throat> the head and Zara Spook was probably the leading walk the dog type bait. By walk the dog, I mean you work your bait, you use your rod tip to jerk the the, the rod tip on a slack line and the bait walks the dog. It goes back and forth this way and that way. Sachets back and forth. Zara Spook's been around for many, many years and it was the gold standard for that kind of fishing. And when the Sammy came out, it kind of changed the game a little bit. The original Sammies were wooden, as were the original Zara Spooks, but the Sammies came out many, many years later. I don't exactly know what year the Sammy came out. It, it was probably sometime in the early 90s, but I'm not sure anymore. It could have been late 80s. I really don't know anymore. Uh, it's, uh, it's too many years have gone by. But this bait uh, made walking the dog very popular again. And I think it made it a little easier because of the shape of the bait. The bait is more streamlined. It has just a little bit of a, a bend in the back. You can probably see more on this larger sized one here. And the way the bait orients in the water, uh, it's tail heavy, it's, the tail is weighted. It just makes it that much easier to walk the dog. And it has more of a bait fish profile, a bait fish shape to it than does the Zara Spook. So when this bait came out, it became popular in a hurry and it caught a lot of fish and it still catches a ton of fish today. It's one of my go-to topwater lures to this day. I, I like it, I actually like it better than the Zara Spook. I like the Zara Spook as well. There are applications for that especially if the water has a, a bit of a wave to it or a bit of a, a pretty uh, good ripple or a strong, or you know some good uh, waves on the top of the water. The spook has a more blunt nose and so it makes a little more commo commotion in, in, uh, in that kind of environment. But overall, if the water is somewhat calm or if there's just a ripple, it's really hard to beat the, uh, the Lucky Craft Sammy. This is a really good bait. A little bit expensive, costs more than the spook, but it's, it has that profile that I like. And there are four different sizes, at least four that I'm aware of. The most basic size, the one that sells the most, is called the Sammy 100. That's this one here. Uh, this is like a Pro Aurora Blue, I think it's called, or Aurora Black. No, this is Aurora Blue. And it's a 100 millimeter length bait, which is approximately four or four and a half inches, something like that. It's a perfect size bait uh, for this app, for top water applications, in my opinion. I just think it's a really good size. It'll catch big fish, but it's not too big to catch a lot of standard size fish as well. Now, I uh, I always use you know when you when you fish a topwater like this, you want to have you want to create a, either a loop knot or have a small snap to attach the bait. That allows more freedom of movement and allow the bait to work a little bit better. I like to use a very small stat, snap, a size one or a size zero one, very very small, very light. Doesn't take away from the action of the lure. In fact, it enhances the action of the lure because it can swing freely on that snap. If you just tied a, a knot directly to this, it'd still work, but you don't have that free swinging bait and it, and it takes away, away a little bit of the action. So you have a Sammy 100. There's a Sammy 85 for 85 millimeters. You can see that's a little smaller. There's a Sammy 120. That's a little bit bigger than the 100, as you can see. And then there's also a Sammy 65, a very small Sammy 65. This one's a, an interesting color that came out of Japan. I don't remember the name of it. It's like ghost minnow, but they put red gills on it and a red belly. 
hopefully you can see that. So a uh, really nice color on this. So the baits, the size that I fish the most by far are the 100 and the, and the 65. These are the two baits that I fish probably 95% of the time when I'm fishing Sammy's. Sometimes I'll go to the bigger 120 size if I'm trying to emulate bigger fish or if there's a little bit more of a chop on the water, I'll use the larger size. The 85, the Sammy 85, I hardly ever use it at all. And I think it's because it's close enough to the 100 uh, where it, there's really not much difference between the 100 and the 65. I'm sorry, 85, the 100 and the 85. But then when you get to the 65, then you have more contrast. So that drives me to fish the 100 and the 65 the most. Now, sometimes I modify these baits. You can see I put a feather tail on this one. And uh, on this one, I painted the nose red. We'll get into why I do those mods. <clears throat> Let me talk about the size of the hooks real quick. On the 120, you wanna put size two hooks. These are Gamagatsu EWGs. I, I, you know why I love those hooks. I think they're the best hook out there, the best treble out there for this kind of fishing. So number two is on the 120. The Sandy 100s, I like number fours. You can also get away with number fours on the Sandy 85. And then when you get down to that Sandy 65 size, you gotta go to a number, a number six hook. And so that's the proper, proper hooking situation for these baits. So how do I fish these? Well, there's a number of retrieves. The most basic of which is to throw the bait out there let it settle for a second or two or a couple seconds, and then you just start walking the dog with it. And usually that's at a steady pace. It's just, you know, you just walk the dog all the way back to the boat at a steady pace. That's a good way to fish it. And oftentimes it works and catches fish. That's probably what I do the most, especially when I want to cover some water. But you got to experiment because if the fish aren't biting that or if they're just slapping at it, then you have to start changing. Another method is to go real slow. That's just the same steady pace, but extremely slowly slower cadence. Sometimes that drives them crazy. Sometimes extremely fast drives them crazy. So now you're just doing that really fast with your rod and this thing's just popping back and forth and looks like a bait fish trying to escape, especially when you're fishing this small 65 size. So that's another way of fishing it. And then there's uh, stop and go. Uh, sometimes I like to do one, two, three and stop and then one, two and stop and, and fish it that way. And that's usually when I'll use a, t a tail feather hook because I don't think the tail feather matters very much if the bait is constantly moving. I don't think it, I, I just haven't noticed a difference in hookups that way. But I do think sometimes it makes a difference when you stop this bait and it's just sitting there and these, these feather tails are undulating a little bit. It could be just a little bit more of an attraction for that kind of fishing. I want to talk a little bit about this 65 because I really like this bait. You know, I, I fish the 100 a lot and it's usually what I'll start with unless I know uh, what's happening in the system. And, and I'll give you a good example. At Beltsville, for example, Beltsville Lake in Carbon County, very clear water, gets pressured quite a bit, lots of boats, lots of traffic, skiers, fishermen. And oftentimes there's an opportunity there for topwater bites. But if you have a lot of pressure day in and day out, uh, the top water, the standard size stuff doesn't seem to work as well. And that's when I'll go to some of these smaller ones, especially if the, if the weather is cloudy. This is when this top water bite on Beltsville can be very good. Cloudy weather, maybe a little drizzle, maybe a little fog, still water, or maybe just a little ripple on the water. Perfect time to throw top water, especially when there's not a lot of boat traffic on the lake. Sometimes they'll crush the 100, and so you just fish with that. But if they don't, before you give up on the top water, go to the little 65. The other time to fish this is right after the spawn when there's a lot of little fry in the water. This is June time frame now, mid-June, late June, right through July. It's a good time to fish these smaller baits because there's a lot of smaller fry in the water. It's also a fantastic bait on the rivers on the because generally the fry, the, the bait fish in the rivers is a little bit smaller. Uh, where I fish here in the Delaware and the Lehigh River, there's a shad run on both those rivers, and in September, the shad fry are going back down the river, and these things are killers in September on both those rivers because of it. So the 65 is a really, really good smallmouth lure. Largemouth will hit it too, but you'd be surprised at the large size of fish that I catch on this little bait. This little, you know, it's like two and a half inches, so 65 millimeters, but it's a killer bait, and I really like the, the bait because it, it doesn't give off a lot of negative cues. It's small. 
It, 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 you know, when you have a color like this, it's a bit translucent. They can't really get a good look at it. And uh, if there's this topwater bite, sometimes this thing can really, really do the trick. So that's, a, that's it on the Sammies. You know, I think I'd give you some good information about the hooks, when to use a tail feather. Sometimes it's nice to put some red on the bait or even some white. There's a ton of different colors that Lucky Craft offers in these Sammies. I like to try and match the bait fish as best I can. Sometimes I'll go off, you know, you know, I will go a little bit differently. Like at night, I might fish a black bait. So, because black, believe it or not, silhouettes really good against the night sky. So sometimes I'll use a bait like that. But most of the time I'm trying to match the forage or even the color of the water. If you have greenish or bluish water, a bluish bait would be good or a greenish bait would be good in that circumstance. So that's another way of going about it, especially if you're not real familiar with the, with the forage that's in the water. Take a look at that water color and, and see if you can't somewhat match that color a little bit with your bait color. Well, if you found the video helpful, if, you, if you've never fished a Sammy of any of these sizes, Sammy 165, give it a try. It's a really good bait. It costs a little bit of money. They're maybe 14 bucks. I don't know. You probably get them less than that if you look, but they do catch fish. It's very easy to walk the dog with these. Uh, the spook is easy to walk the dog with too. I think this is a little bit of an easier bait to walk the dog with. So if you're not familiar with how to do it, it's a good way to practice. It's a good bait to practice with on how to walk the dog. And, and uh, it's a good lure. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.